What is going on guys, it's Panjani here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the ultimate FPS increase guide for Subnautica. Subnautica recently came out of early access and actually launched onto the full release with inside of Steam, and since then it's actually gained a lot of popularity, it's gained a lot of updates, and the game has seen some significant upgrades in terms of visual quality, performance, overall world size, and features. And throughout the course of the early access updates, many people have seen increased frame rates, but there are also some people out there who might have taken a dip in performance, but the main purpose for this guide today is to ensure that you guys are going to be eliminating any FPS stuttering you might be experiencing, boosting the overall frame rate with inside of Subnautica to ensure that we're getting the best performance possible whilst keeping the game looking very visually pleasing. This guide is aimed at absolutely everyone, doesn't matter whether or not you're running a low-end system, medium-end system, or a high-end system, this guide is here to ensure that you're getting the best performance possible for the system in which you've paid money for. Again, as always guys, if you guys can leave any results down in the comment section below after you're done with this video, if you can also leave a like on this video, that would be very, very, very appreciated. And if you guys are happy with the results and want to share this around with any friends, that would be deeply appreciated as well, or anyone on Steam that you know can benefit from these fixes with inside of this video as showing this video around pretty much gains the growth of it and keeps me being able to do what I do. And to ensure that this video is as fast as possible and as informative as possible, we're going to be going ahead and getting straight on into it. Right, so starting off, what you guys need to go ahead and do is navigate down into the description down below and you'll find an FPS pack increase, something along those lines that we titled that. Go onto the link, download it, and once it's on your desktop, you'll see a file that looks just like this. Now, if you can't actually do anything with this file, you're either going to need 7-zip or WinRAR downloaded. You can use Google or you can also go down deep in the description and the links for either of those programs will be there. Install it to your machine and then you'll be able to right click on the file you downloaded and hit extract here. Once you've then extracted the file, you'll then notice that there is a folder on your desktop preferably. Go inside of the Subnautica FPS increase pack and inside of there you'll find a game files folder and a time resolution.exe program. So to start off with this guy, we're actually going to be going ahead and installing the custom game files. So to do this, simply go ahead, navigate down to Steam, navigate down to Subnautica, right click and go to properties. Go to the local files tab found here at the top, hit browse local files. Then once we're inside of this folder, we're then going to be navigating down to the SN unmanaged data folder, double clicking. And then once we're inside of this folder, we're then going to be pulling up the FPS pack again, going into the game files folder, highlighting all of the files with inside of here, dragging them over and replacing them. Simply hit replace the files in this destination. And then the custom game config files will then be installed into your game. Now you're probably wondering what some of these files do. They simply mean that more CPU threads can be used and the game is slightly more optimized for most machines with inside of these graphics presets. Just to ensure that we are getting a good foundation to be able to start changing some things around and ensuring that we're getting the best FPS possible. So once you're then done with that, you can simply then exit out of both of the folders and you can then exit out of this folder on Steam. And following on from there, we're then going to be enabling a launch command with inside of the game. So simply go over to Subnautica in Steam again, right click, go to properties. Then once the property tab then opens, then go over to the general tab this time, and then go down to the set launch options button down here. Then once the launch options text box opens, simply go down to where you can actually type, and then we're gonna be typing in dash no log, just like so. And once that's then typed, simply press okay and then close. Then once the launch options have then been applied, we're then going to be applying one more fix inside of Steam, and that is to right click on the game one last time, go down to properties once again, go to local files, browse local files. Then on the side of here, we're then gonna be navigating down to the subnautica.exe, right clicking on that, going to properties, then going ahead to the compatibility tab found here at the top. And we're interested in highlighting both of these options down here. The override high DPI scaling behavior scaling performed by, make sure that is then set to application, and also disable full screen optimizations. Now for this option down here, the disable full screen optimizations one, if you guys are running on high end machines or medium end machines, pretty much any of the latest hardware that is out from either Nvidia or AMD, you might actually find better results leaving the disable full screen option unchecked. But for me, I'm personally going ahead and checking both of them. Once it's unset, simply press apply. Okay, and you can then exit out of the game files and Steam itself. Now, once that you've set your custom launch options and you've installed the custom game files themselves, we can actually move on to optimizing the operating system itself and applying some fixes, some of the latest updates of Visual C++ and some audio fixes within inside of the operating system itself and some more Windows fixes as well to ensure that we're getting the best overall performance to make sure that we're not experiencing any stuttering, any excess load on the CPU overhead and ensuring that our frame rate within inside of Subnautica is not just fluid but it is also high as well. And starting off with doing this, what you need to go ahead and do is go down to the description down below and go to the Visual C++ update link. Within inside of here, you'll then be brought to this website here. I want you guys to go ahead and scroll down to the Visual Studio 2017 option with inside of here and then go down to the x86 and x64 versions found here. Make sure again that you are under the Visual Studio 2017 folder and we can then start by installing x86 first. So simply go ahead to the blue hyperlink the VC Redist x86.exe and click it once and then you'll then notice it's then downloading. Once it's downloaded open it up. It might then notify you that you either need to install or repair it. So press whichever option is there for you whether it be repair or install press it. 
Once the setup is then completed, it will then notify that you have to restart your PC for the updates to be fully applied. We're not going to be doing this yet as we're going to be going ahead and pressing the close option. And then once we're done with that, we can then simply repeat the steps for the x64 version here. Again, no matter what PC you're running on, as long as you're running Windows 10, we want to install both of these. So once that's downloaded, simply open it up and just repeat the process. Then once both of the C++ updates are then applied, you also want to hit close on this as well as we do not want to restart our computer yet as we're going to be restarting our machines after all of the fixes and updates have been applied. Following on from that step, we're also going to be going down into the description down below and then we're then going to be following along with the CPU core unparking utility, which you will then find underneath the visual C++ links in the description down below. You'll then be brought to the website which is on your screens now. Now at the top of this website you'll get a brief introduction as to what CPU unparking does, but if you guys don't want to go ahead and read this I'll give you a brief explanation of what it is whilst we're installing the program. But what you guys want to go ahead and do is simply scroll all the way down to the bottom and you'll find the download application executable files found here. Simply click that link, you'll then notice CPU core parking 3.zip will then start downloading. Once it's then downloaded simply open up the zip file. Go inside of WinRAR or 7-zip and double click the CPU core on parking setup. And then after clicking that, the setup wizard will then open up, simply hit next. Agree to the terms of the license agreement, press next once more. Install it into the default path and press next and press install. Then once the program has finished installing, make sure that launch CPU core on parking 3.exe is then selected and press finish. Then after a short amount of time passes, the program should then open and it should look similar to this. Instead of the CPU core unparking utility, it's very simple to use and very simple to navigate. At the top here, you can see your CPU cores and which are parked and which are not parked, which is marked as either enabled or disabled. Now with inside of this program, what we're interested in doing is going ahead to our power data plan, going ahead and going to the drop down menu and selecting high performance. Once that is then selected, what I want you guys to go ahead and do is go to your core parking index and simply grab the blue slider and drag it all the way up to 100%. And I also want you guys to go ahead and do that for the frequency scaling index grab it drag it all the way up to 100 press apply and then press ok once those settings have then been applied you're completely done and your cpu is now unparked so given that you applied those changes you can then go ahead and simply exit out of the program as we are then done with the cpu unparking utility and following on from there we're also going to be going down to our windows power options to ensure that windows and the game itself can use your full processing power along with your ram and everything else to make sure that you're getting the best fps possible and the system itself isn't throttling any performance. So to do this, simply go to the bottom left hand side and type in power. Then you can click on any of the power plan options here. Just simply look for the battery and the cord and click on any one of them. Go to the power options tab found here at the top. And then once you're inside of this screen, simply go ahead to the show additional power plans drop down menu, click that once, then simply go ahead and find the high performance power plan, select it, make sure it's selected there on the left hand side, and then hit change plan settings. On the side of here, you can set these options to whichever you wish to do so. They're completely personal preference and they will not have any effect on this guide. What we're interested in doing is going down to the change advanced power settings. Then with inside of here, go to the hard disk option, go to turn off hard disk after, go to the setting and double click and set the number of minutes to zero, press apply and scroll all the way down to processor power management, go to the drop down menu, go to the minimum processor state and the maximum processor state and ensure that they are both set to 100%. If they're not, double click on the setting, set the number to 100 and then press apply and then OK. Once you're then done with all of those changes, press apply, press OK, save changes down here, and then you can then exit out of the power options. Moving on from there, we're then going to be applying some audio fixes to Windows to ensure that Windows isn't forcing any post-processing, which could be providing the CPU with extra overhead, which could cause slowdowns with inside of games and cause unnecessary frame drops, and might overall bring down the frame rate of most games anyway. This should make a relatively noticeable difference in pretty much every game you play, regardless of what sort of system you're running, or whether that be low end or high end. And to do this, it's very, very simple. Simply go down to the bottom right hand side and go to your speaker icon, right click on it, and then go to the playback devices. Then with inside of here, simply go to whichever playback device you're using for your main playback device. For me, that is my speakers, which are found here. It should be very easy to see what your default speaker option is as it will have this tick next to it. And you should be seeing the audio from this video actually playing on here on the right hand side. Now, just to note before we apply these fixes, once you go ahead and actually apply these fixes, you might not be able to hear the sound of the video. If that is the case, simply go ahead and exit out of Google Chrome and just simply boot back into it, load up the video again, as there might just be a slight audio bug with you applying fixes and keeping Google Chrome open. So if you do not hear the sound of the video after applying these fixes, just simply close out of Google Chrome and just relaunch into it. So to do this, simply go ahead to your playback device, right click on it and go to properties, then go to the enhancements tab found here at the top, then go to disable all sound effects and make sure that is then checked. Once it's then checked, go ahead and press apply down here in the bottom right hand side, then go to the advanced tab. Then with inside of it, we're then going to be going to the drop down menu, 
which is under default format, and selecting 16-bit 44,100 hertz. CD quality, enabling that, pressing apply, and pressing OK. Once you've then done inside of there, you can also press OK to the sound tab, and then you've removed any post-processing from the audio with inside of Windows, and Windows will be able to provide a one-to-one -one audio experience, no post-processing, no excess bass boost or anything like that, no unnecessary load on the processor to ensure that we're getting the best frames possible. And to pretty much 99.99% .99 of you, you should not hear any audible difference from that at all. Yet the performance gains are very, very good. Then moving on from there, we're actually gonna be going ahead and actually decluttering the operating system itself, removing any excess caching files, Windows files, stuff that doesn't actually need it by the operating system and clearing out some overall hard drive space to ensure that we're getting the best performance possible. This should help speed up load times and performance with inside of pretty much every game you're playing, not just Subnautica. So you should see very good performance gains across the board from this, and it's just overall really good PC maintenance. So to start off with doing this, what I want you guys to go ahead and do is go down to the bottom left hand side and then type in percent app data percent and then press enter. Then once you've pressed enter, this folder here should then open. Go to the app data folder found here at the top. Go into local. Then once you're inside of the local tab, scroll all the way down until you see a folder called TEMP or temp, which is found here for me. Double click on it. And then inside of here, this is all of the Windows XS dump files and caching files, which mostly aren't being used by your system. What we're then gonna be going ahead and doing is going all the way to the top, highlighting every single file and folder inside of there, right clicking and pressing delete. Or then notify you that the action cannot be completed for all files and folders within inside of here. That's absolutely fine. Just simply hit the checkbox here and press skip. And then once that is finished, these are the only files and folders which were actually being used by your system with inside of the temp folder. Now for me, I only cleared out my temp folder around about a week ago, but for the majority of you guys out there who haven't done this before, you could be seeing gains of around about five to around about 50 plus gigabytes on your system just by emptying out that folder as so much excess rubbish gets put in there, especially from older system installs as well. So if you guys have actually upgraded from Windows 10 or you haven't actually freshly installed Windows onto our new hard drive, but for the majority of you guys out there, you should be seeing very, very good results in terms of how you can actually delete from here and the performance gains which comes by it. If you guys actually managed to get a look at how many gigabytes are actually being removed from this folder, let me know down in that comment section below because there are some wacky stories in there sometimes and it is always great to hear from you. Once you're then done deleting the files inside of that folder, we can then simply go ahead and exit out. So once you guys have discovered which GPU your system is actually running, go down to the description down below once again and go down to the corresponding link for your GPU. So if you're running an NVIDIA GeForce card, go to the NVIDIA GeForce link. If you're running an AMD Radeon card, go to the AMD Radeon link. So for you, NVIDIA GeForce guys, it's very, very simple. Simply navigate to the website down in the description down below. It'll bring you to this website here. And then go to the automatic driver updates tab found here at the top and hit download on the GeForce experience. With inside of there, follow the setup wizard. It'll go ahead and detect everything on your machine for you. Find you the latest GPU driver updates and install those for you. And this can also optimize your games as well, which is actually extremely handy, especially for you guys who don't want any hassle with things. And you just want things done easily for you and you want the best performance possible. It's a very useful program to have. For you AMD Radeon users, it's a very similar process. Navigate down to the description down below, click on the AMD Radeon link, and then you'll be given to this website here. Go to the automatically detect and install your driver found here. Hit the download now button. Again, download it, open up the setup, follow the on-screen wizard. It'll go ahead and detect everything for you, download the necessary drivers, and any applications that might need to be installed with inside of that to ensure that you guys are getting the best performance possible out of your GPU, and you're getting every ounce of performance in which you have paid for. It shocks me how many people actually don't update their GPU drivers, especially those that actually play the latest games, especially ones that are receiving updates, such as Subnautica or any other Steam release titles or just overall gaming in general, so many people don't update their GPU drivers and that can be the main cause of any FPS drops, issues, or just overall lower end frame rates. The majority of the time, it's actually because it's an outdated GPU driver. I recommend the majority of you guys actually go out and have a look for new GPU drivers around about once a month or so, just to be on the safe side and ensuring that your system is running to the best of its ability. Now moving on to one of the last operating specific optimizations we can do, is we're actually gonna be going down to the bottom left hand side once again and this time we're going to be typing in this PC and then right clicking on the this PC app and going to properties. On the side of it, we're then going to be going ahead to the left hand side and clicking advanced system settings. And then once we're inside of it, we're then going to be navigating to the advanced tab found here at the top. Then going down to performance and pressing settings. Then once the performance options has then opened up, go to the visual effects tab found here at the top and select the custom option found here. What we then want to go ahead and do is actually uncheck pretty much every single option within inside of this drop down menu just by simply clicking on the checkbox next to it. 
And the only ones we want to be keeping enabled are smooth edges of screen fonts and show thumbnails instead of icons. Make sure that the only two in which are selected, I personally like to turn smooth edges of screen fonts off. That's completely personal preference. You, you can turn that off as well if you wish to do so. But for me, I like to keep it off. But for the majority of you guys, you're going to want to keep that on. <clears throat> Once you've then set that, simply press the apply button. Then go to the advanced tab found here at the top. Go to process of scheduling and adjust it for best performance of programs. And then what we also want to do is go down to the virtual memory tab and click change. Then the virtual memory tab will then open. Now for the majority of you guys watching this video, this option here at the top, which is the automatically manage paging file option will be checked. What we want to be going ahead and doing is actually unchecking that. We're then going to be wanting to go down to all of our drives that are installed to our system, clicking on each one of them, setting it to no paging file, and then pressing set and then pressing yes, and then repeating the process for every single drive within inside of our system. No paging file, set, no paging file, set, no paging file, and then set. Now what we're gonna be doing now is actually setting a system managed page file with inside of the best hard drive possible. Now for you guys who only have one hard drive or SSD installed to your system, we're gonna be putting our system managed page file onto that. Now if you guys have an SSD installed to your system, it doesn't necessarily have to have your operating system on it, but just any SSD with inside of your system, it is best that you set the system managed page file to that. Or if you're just running multiple hard drives, we don't wanna be putting the system page file on the hard drive in which your games are on. So the best, so depending on what your scenario is if you have an SSD in your system we're going to be wanting to put the system manage page file on that if you guys don't have an SSD in your system but you have multiple hard drives we want to be putting the system manage page file on the hard drive in which doesn't have your games on or if you just have the one drive installed to your machine we're going to be setting the system manage page file onto that drive so once you guys have decided on where you're going to be putting your page file simply click on the drive in which you're going to be putting your page file on for me it's going to be my C drive as that's an SSD and select the system manage page file size here and then press set and then press OK. It will then notify you that a restart is required for the changes to take effect. That's absolutely fine as we're going to be restarting our machines later on. Then just press apply and OK, OK, and then hit restart later. And that now brings us on to the final steps of the guide. So simply go ahead to the folder which you downloaded earlier on in the guide one last time and get the timeresolution.exe out of the folder and drag it onto your desktop. Now once the timeresolution.exe is then on your desktop, we are ready to go ahead and actually restart our machines. So go ahead, turn off your machine, reboot it, come back to this video, and we can then continue on with the guide. Right guys, welcome back to the video. You guys should now have restarted your machines and we should be on a fresh boot of Windows and we should be ready to go ahead and actually play our game. Now I'm going to be showing you guys how to boot the game in the most efficient way possible to ensure that we're getting the most amount of resources to it so we can experience the game to its full potential and at the best performance possible. So to do this, simply go ahead and go to the timeresolution.exe, double click on it. Then with inside of this program, what this program basically does is it lowers the time resolution with inside of Windows to ensure that you guys are getting the lowest latency possible between your hardware, the operating system, and the game files itself. This basically reduces any frame lag, reduces input lag, and should also help reduce any frame stuttering you guys might be experiencing and just boosting overall frame rates. I personally like to use this program with every single game I play, whether it be PUBG, Subnautica, CSGO, Fortnite. I like to use time resolution for pretty much every game I play just to ensure that I'm getting the best performance possible. So to use the program, simply boot it up anytime you want to play a game. Then go to the maximum button found here on the left hand side, click it, then what you guys need to go ahead and do is just simply minimize out the program, just leave it running. We then boot into our game, play as long as desired. Once we're then done playing with the game, simply exit out of the game, come back to the time resolution program which is running, then hit default and then exit out. Assuming that we're actually gonna be going ahead and actually booting into our game, we're gonna be booting into time resolution and hitting maximum. We're then gonna be minimizing time resolution and then going into Steam. What we can then go ahead and do is actually just go to Subnautica and then hit play. Then once the game has booted, we can then go ahead and actually go into our in-game visual settings. So to do this, simply go ahead down to the options menu found here on the main menu. And what we can start off by doing is actually going ahead to our resolution found inside of here. I recommend setting this resolution to the native resolution of your monitor. So for me, that is 1920 by 1080. Again, if you guys are experiencing some slightly lower FPS or any FPS stuttering, what you guys can go ahead and do is you can actually work your way down with resolutions and find the resolution in which you are happy with visually and performance wise again there isn't really a set in stone answer in which i can give you for the best resolution you might just have to find that out on your machine but i recommend for the majority of you guys out there just go with the whatever native is for your monitor we then want to make sure that full screen is then enabled here make sure the v-sync is then unchecked field of view can be set completely personal preference i like to go with 90 and then once that's done simply hit apply and then go to the graphics tab found here on the left hand side then once we're inside of the graphics tab simply go ahead and navigate down to the advanced options found here and what i recommend doing is setting it 
detail and water quality to match in whichever your system is. So if you guys have a low-end system, go ahead and set the detail and the water quality to low. If you have a medium-end system, go with medium. And if you have a high-end system, I recommend going with high. That should help best match the settings without maxing anything out or causing any VRAM issues with your graphics cards depending on what your systems are like. And there's a pretty safe bet in which to do so to ensure that you're getting the best visual quality with inside of your system. So once that's then matched, I also like to go to anti-aliasing and I personally like to turn anti-aliasing over to FXAA, then go to anti-aliasing quality and actually turn that to off. I then like to turn off bloom, lens dirt and depth of field. Again, you can turn them on as well, but they will decrease the FPS in which you're getting, and I find the game still looks very, very nice with all of these turned off. I also like to go down to motion blur quality, ambient occlusion, and screen space reflections and turn all of them off, and also turn off dithering. Once you guys have gone ahead and actually set all of those options inside of there, make sure you go ahead and apply them in the bottom right hand side, press back, and then we can then continue on to play the game. And then once the game has them fully booted and you're booted inside of the world, what you guys can actually do is you can actually enable a secret menu within inside of the game, within inside of the development options, and you can actually go ahead and lower your graphics and optimize your game even further. So to do this, what you simply need to do is whilst you're loaded into the game, doesn't matter where you are, is you can simply just go ahead and press F3. And then inside of here, you'll then notice that in the left hand side, a graphics option has then opened. Now to go into any of these options, you actually need to be able to use your mouse cursor and you can't by default. So to do this, what you simply need to do once the menu is up, is press F8. And you'll then notice that you can then use the mouse cursor. And then once we're inside of this options menu, what we can do is further go ahead and optimize our games depending on what our machines are like. So if you guys are running on low end systems, I'm gonna put on the right hand side of the screen right now in which settings you should be using. But for the majority of you guys running on like medium end systems, high end systems and higher end low end systems, you should be good to go and copy the settings I'm about to put in now. And that is gonna be setting off with the texture quality. I like to go ahead and set this to three. No matter what sort of system you're running on, I recommend going with three on the texture quality as that seems to be a pretty happy medium with performance and visual quality. You can't really see too much of a difference between three and four and it is just fantastic. Light shafts here, you can optionally turn these on or off if you wish to do so, depending on what your FPS is. I personally like to keep them on. <clears throat> Frame time graph, we're gonna be making sure that is then turned off. Ambient particles, we're then gonna be turning that off as well. Visualize depth, we're gonna be turning off. Going to the water volume and water surface options, make sure both of those are disabled. What we can then go ahead and do is actually go to our shader LOD and I like to go ahead and set this to 200. What I then like to do is go down to the LOD group bias option found here. This is actually a drag and drop option. So what you need to do is go ahead to the little dot here and you can drag it around to whichever you wish to do so. I like to set this to a value of around about 0.85, just somewhere around there. And I like to also turn shadow cascades to one. So once you guys are then done inside of there, applying those edits to the game configs itself, simply go ahead and press F3 once again and F8 and then you'll then be brought back into the game. And then once you guys are done inside of there, the only thing that's a bit of a pain is the fact you actually have to do that F3 menu every single time you boot into the game. But if you guys get into a habit of doing that, it can be done very, very quickly, especially if you memorize what your settings should be. So again, every single time you boot into the game, just simply press F3, then F8, go into the options, set those ones up. It's only a couple of clicks of a button, especially if you guys are going to be playing for around about an hour or so. It's only going to take around about a minute or two to do that. And the frame rate increases with inside of there are very, very, very good. And there you guys have it. That is my ultimate FPS increase guide for sub to go. If you guys have any other tips, tricks, or anything like that in the comment section down below in which you think I've missed, or you just want to provide any extra help or just get a general overall healthy discussion going down in that comment section down below, that'll be deeply, deeply appreciated. Again, if you guys managed to measure what your FPS was before doing these fixes and then after, if you guys can post those results, that'll be absolutely fantastic as well. Or if you just have any general overall questions, queries, suggestions, or feedback to leave, let me know down in that comment section below as it is always fantastic. If you guys are pleased with the video and you're pleased with the results, please also leave a like on the video as that be deeply appreciated and also feel free to have a look on the channel look around for any of the other videos especially if you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest with inside of games whether that be early access steam in general stuff like fortnite battlegrounds i do most popular games and if i haven't done the games out there if you guys leave a suggestion down in the comments below and i actually manage to see it and it seems worthwhile doing i'll go ahead and i'll do my research and i should come back with you guys with a video on said game which was suggested within around about a week or so depending on how demanding the game is none of this stuff costs money and it's just there to ensure that you're getting the most out of what you've already paid for in your machine and you're getting the best overall experiences possible so again if you guys can have a snoop around on the channel and if you guys would be so generous to drop a subscribe as well that'd be so deeply appreciated but again it's not necessary thank you very much for watching this video guys i've been panjano and i am out